Let's do some examples. A 4,800 kilogram truck is driving east at 18 meters per second. At the same time, a 2,200 kilogram sedan is driving west at 20 meters per second. The driver of the sedan is texting and drifts over the dividing line. There's a high speed head-on collision between the sedan and the truck. Immediately after the collision, the velocity of the truck is 4.0 meters per second east. Find the velocity of the sedan immediately after the collision. So I'm going to sketch out a diagram of before and after the collision, before, just to organize my information. My truck is going east, so I'm going to call that big M. It's going to the east. My car is going west, and I'm going to call that little m. Um, this is going east at 18 meters per second. This is going west at 1, 2. Since it's going west, it's going to be negative 20 meters per second. After the collision, after the collision, it says the velocity of the truck is 4 meters per second east. So after the collision, my truck is still moving to the east. And the speed is going to be positive 4.0 meters per second. And our unknown is this V2. So we can set up conservation of momentum here. Since we know all the masses, we know all the velocities. The initial momentum, M1, V1 plus, that is M1, U1, it's a capital M, M1, U1 plus M2, U2 equals M, big M1, V1 plus little M2, V2. I can plug in my numbers. I'm going to omit units for now. Big M is 4,800, 4,800 times 18 plus little m, my sedan is 2,200 times negative 20 equals 4,800 times 4, positive 4, plus 2,200 times, well, our final, final velocity, V2. Now I can just use a calculator to simplify and solve. 4,800 times 18 plus 2,200 times negative 20 gives us our total initial momentum. 4.24 times 10 to the 4. Units are kilograms, meters per second. 4,800 times 4. 1.92 times 10 to the 4 kilograms, meters per second, plus 2,200 V2. Subtract off 1.92 from 4.24. We get 2.32 times 10 to the 4 kilograms, meters per second, equals 2,200 kilograms times V2. Divide both sides by 2,200. we get uh, 10.5 meters per second equals V2. And since it's positive, that means our object is moving east. So 10.5 meters per second east. Okay, that's just a standard collision. Next question. This is an example of a perfectly inelastic collision. A 204 caliber Ruger with a mass of 2.10 grams can travel at a rate of uh, 1,280 meters per second. The bullet is fired at a 65.0 gram wooden block resting on a frictionless table and becomes lodged therein. What is the final velocity of the wooden block and what is the impulse imparted to the wooden block? So. We can also set up conservation of momentum here. I'm going to do a before and an after. Before. Uh, we have our bullet going to the right, and our block is not moving. Okay. 
after, our two objects are stuck together. And we want to find our speed, our unknown speed, v2. Since they're both together, they're both moving at the same speed, I can really just write v. So this will be m1 is 2.10 grams. m2 equals 65.0 grams. And down here, our mass is just going to be m1 plus m2, which is equal to 67.10 grams. Let's use conservation of momentum. Um, m1 v u1, m1 u1 plus m2 u2 equals, well, since it's perfectly inelastic, they stick together at the end, our combined mass m1 plus m2 times v. Plug in our numbers, 1280, 1280 meters per second times 2.10 grams plus zero, because the speed of our second object is zero, is equal to 67.1 grams times speed. 1280 times 2.1 is 2.688 times 10 to the 3 equals 60, let me write down the units, uh, that's grams meters per second because I multiplied grams by meters per second equals 67.1 grams times V. Divide both sides by 67.1 I get uh, V is equal to 40 point one meters per second. And since it's positive, it's moving in the same direction as the bullet was, to the right. 40 meters per second to the right. All right. That's for a perfectly inelastic collision. Next question. This is an explosion example. A 2.50 gram bullet is fired from a rifle at 355 meters per second. If the rifle has a mass of 4.50 kilograms, what is its recoil velocity? Um, so, uh, before the collision, before the explosion, I should say, the bullet and the rifle are embedded together and they're not moving. So their speed, let's write it as u, their speeds are zero. So that means our initial momentum is zero. After the collision, our bullet is moving in one direction speed v1, and our rifle is going to be moving in the opposite direction with the speed of v2. Um, you know our bullet has a mass of 2.50 grams. Our rifle has a mass of m1. m2 is 4.50 kilograms. And the bullet has a speed of 355 meters per second. So our initial momentum is zero. We want to find our final speed of the uh, of the rifle. Conservation of momentum. Initially, our momentum is zero, so the initial uh, equals p final, while zero is equal to m1 v1 plus m2 v2. I can plug my number. 0 equals 2, well, I need my units for mass to be the same. So I'm going to convert my grams to kilograms. It's going to be 0 0.00250 kilograms. So we get 0 0.00250 kilograms times 355 meters per second. Um, plus 4.50 kilograms times V2 equals zero. We can simplify. Multiply out that first term, point, first term point zero zero two five times 355. You get zero equals 0 0.8875 kilograms meters per second plus 4.5. 0 kilograms times v2. Just going to cancel kilograms now. 
subtract out 0 0.0075, negative 0 0.8875 meters per second equals 4.50 times V2. Divide both sides by 4.50. I get 0 point, that's negative 0 0.197 meters per second equals V2. Negative about 0.2 meters per second. Uh, its mass is over a thousand times the mass of the bullet, so its speed is less than 1,000 the speed of the bullet by conservation of momentum. Um, that's all. In summary, momentum is always conserved in, in a collision, and it's really always conserved in the universe. So the total momentum before is always going to be equal to the total momentum after. And we can simplify our conservation of momentum equation when we have explosions or perfectly inelastic collisions. Hope that was helpful. Bye.